Hi, I'm Taylor and we're going from Boston to Los Angeles by car. I cannot stress this to you enough, but it's going to be a long trip. It's gonna be a long trip. I'll be straight with you. This is gonna be a long trip and I don't sit well in cars. So for this reason, this vlog might seem a little superficial because- I don't wanna show everything because I am not mentally able to do that. I, I just wanna have fun and if I have to shoot the whole time, then I'm not gonna have fun. And we leave tomorrow and all the boxes behind me are mostly mine, but um, I live in a shared space right now, so. My current roommate's stuff's also around, and then the new roommate who's coming in, her stuff is also here, so luckily, there are some things I don't even have to worry about, but. Leave tomorrow. And in all honesty, we looked at the two fastest routes on Google Maps because- So this is the part of the video where I basically explain what we're doing here, and surprise, we did not do things according to plan 100%. So instead of just um, saying all the stuff we were going to do, I'll just show some of the highlights on the screen. So preview, check. <laughs> so I'm gonna do my best, but uh, we'll see. I'm so excited! Movers just called me to say that they were coming early and I wasn't prepared, so I was running around, almost ran out of tape, and had to use duct tape. Look at that. Backed that thing up, packed, and about ready to go. We are almost ready to go. I just cleaned everything. And uh, I'm in the closet, which is great because of the lighting. I don't have any chairs, and I didn't feel like standing. So, <laughs> here we are. It's just after 3 p.m., so... It's already been a bit of a day. Um, I should, like, take a walk or something because I'm not going to be doing much of that for the next day. <laughs> We're leaving just after 5 p.m. I'm already kind of sad, honestly. And the first stop is UPS because we're shipping stuff. So if you're moving across the country, it could take like two, three weeks for your stuff to get there. So it makes a lot of sense, in my opinion, it makes a lot of sense to ship things like pillows, dishes from UPS, USPS, takes seven or so days to get there. It's not as expensive as you might think. And now pause, because I totally misjudged. Do you see these three boxes in the back? All together through UPS, about $300, over $300. So please compare your options. Still think it's a good idea to send some stuff, especially if you're relying on a moving truck across country. So again, this was just day zero. The main goal was just to move out and get out of Boston. Love Boston, but gotta start somewhere. So we only drove two hours and ended up in Springfield, Massachusetts. It's barely 8 a.m., but I'm already having a great day because I learned that the dollar store opens at 8 a.m. and is a great place to stop for snacks. First drive of day one, which is about five and a half hours, and we're going to Niagara Falls in Buffalo, New York. There was a little rain, so hopefully that's not going to be a thing today, but we'll see. Still driving in this five and a half hour drive, and this is what I'm searching on Google. Now, is it important that I know this at this period of time? No. Does it bring me comfort? No. But here it is, so. So we made it to Niagara Falls, which I should say is its own little city on both the New York and Canadian sides of the border. And it's very festive right now, a lot of stuff going on in the streets, and the falls were just spectacular. However, the humidity almost killed me, so we left pretty quickly. And going to Erie, Pennsylvania, because we drove only, only five and a half hours, so we're gonna make it a full day by driving some more. And drive some more, we did. But before we got to the hotel, we noticed this giant casino sign from the highway. So we pulled over, you know, just to check things out. And honestly, the casino wasn't that interesting, but there were smoking sections, which I totally forgot was a thing because I don't see that in Boston. I don't even know if it's legal in Massachusetts. Also, like four times an hour, a loudspeaker announcement would come on saying not to leave your unattended kid in a car. Apparently, laws on unattended children in cars vary by state and definitely don't do it in Erie, Pennsylvania. Good morning, this is day two, and anytime we stay at a place with a gym, I will use it, so so take that sitting as the new smoking. We are in Erie, Pennsylvania and headed to Cleveland. Also, I just want to say, a year ago, I was going to make a vlog about Erie, but didn't, so here's what it looks like. Yeah, anyway, going to Cleveland now, about an hour and a half drive, so here we go. The drive is only about 90 minutes, so let's do a little stats recap along the way. So look at all that. That is behind us and ahead of, uh, ahead us, ahead of us, it, no, forget it. So we made it to Ohio, and not just Ohio, but Cleveland. Downtown, we were at the arcade, and it's beautiful. So this is a shopping mall area. It looks really cool, but it's also pretty empty. So, so we didn't stay in Cleveland long because there were bigger adventures ahead, and honestly, the next stop in Indiana kind of blew me away. Better than I expected. It's been a long day, but we decided to keep going, and now we are in Indiana, specifically at Notre Dame du Lac. Notre Dame. That's the full name. I didn't know how to real full name, but that's it. And it is a private 
Catholic Research University. It's really big, really selective, and really well known, especially for this famous movie that came out in 1993. Maybe you know it. <laughs> Honestly, I'm kind of in awe. This is just beautiful. So to put this into context, we were just driving for hours through cornfields and other uninteresting things and here we are and everything's just so well manicured and and these buildings are just beautiful it's kind of like a disney theme park like everything just looks perfect it's probably a really nice place to go to school so that's cool and we're back at it but first a pit stop and to try something new <laughs> dr pepper zero sugar how's the um color and consistency I think it tastes fine, actually. I mean, not like amazing. I think I actually prefer diet. It's weird to say that. For most of this drive so far, going west in the evening just meant that the sun is in your face the entire time. So the sun is still in the sky, you know, this late into summer, this late into the evening, and it's just beautiful. I guess if you live in Indiana, that's like normal, but uh, <laughs> I lived in Boston, so the sun is just not out like this, and it's so beautiful. Good morning. We are in Illinois and that's all I can tell you because we are in a city that I cannot pronounce its name and I don't like that. So I'm not going to say it. So this is where we are and that's that. Really quick, just want to say, make sure you're wearing sunscreen and drinking water anytime road trip or not, but also on a road trip because dehydration real, even when you're just sitting in a car and UV is coming through the windows. Do not be fooled or feel protected. Put on sunscreen. I like to use this one because it feels really nice and it has collagen peptides, which makes me feel like I'm doing good things for my skin, which I am. So check that out. Link below. We are just deep in the Midwest at this point, like fantasy land, postcard, Midwest. And you can find some interesting things here, honestly. This rest stop, just this view, I mean, it's a beautiful day and it's so clear and flat and you can just see so much and it's all beautiful. And I just wanted to take a moment to appreciate that because because this is a road trip. It's not a destination trip. We are appreciating the journey and the little things. I did get a diet today. It was the only one available and and I was wrong. Zero is better. And that's a shame because I loved diet. Now I think I just like diet Dr. Pepper and and I feel conflicted. <laughs> Today's drive is mostly Iowa. Seriously, we're going clear across the state of Iowa, which is longer than you might think. And um, no offense to the people who live here, but I didn't personally have high expectations, which means I was absolutely blown away by this unexpected rest stop. We did find that the world's largest truck stop is in Iowa and on our way, so. I don't know anything about truck things, but I'm already excited. Look at it. It's behind me. Already excited. We need to get gas first. Iowa 80 is huge. Right off the side of the road, it has 900 parking spots for trucks. And then when you go inside, it has this giant array of goods, including food like groceries, clothing, souvenirs, but also very practical things to help you if you have a roadside emergency. And it's also very useful for truckers. They have showers and look at that. As well as a food court, super necessary, restrooms, how can I forget those? Always use those. And then just along the way, there's also this truck museum where you can see cars and trucks and they're old and pretty and colorful and it's free. It's just the most amazing little stop. And <laughs> this is why we love the Midwest. Let's just, let's just love the Midwest for a second. This many days, this many hours, this many miles. I'm sorry to report that the mood has spoiled. It's just getting to that point and I'm ready to just walk around more and we have a schedule and I love keeping the schedule but I'd love to walk around more. No, I'm still excited. I'm still uh, looking forward to stuff including our next stop um, which will be short. If you were paying attention you will also notice that I changed my clothes. I spilled hot coffee on myself at that truck stop. Um, that's probably the exact moment when the mood has had been spoiled. The moment that the mood was spoiled, yes. Next, we drove through Des Moines, Iowa, which is the capital and was interestingly and suspiciously kind of empty. However, we did see this cool sculpture park and then kept right on going. This day is turning out to be seriously long, but I can't really complain because look at this beautiful weather and everything we're seeing is pretty interesting. And I have to say, Nebraska and 
Omaha in particular was just so much more interesting and quirky than I would have ever expected. Which brings us to our next point, Hollywood candy. Yeah, a candy store in Omaha, Nebraska was the highlight of this whole trip. It is a huge candy store that sells Look at all of this, but also it's an antique store and has vintage pinball machines and it's a labyrinth of oddities and colors. It's just so eccentric and unexpected. We're in Omaha, Nebraska, so so wow, this really made the day, if not the whole trip. Good morning. We decided to end the night and start the day in Lincoln, Nebraska, the capital. So we didn't stay here long, but we did stay at this very cool Western-style hotel called Graduate by Hilton, Lincoln. And it was great, like just this ambiance alone, great. Breakfast, also very cheap, very happy. And then we kept on going, and I have to say, spoiler alert, today is all about Nebraska. Why? Because it's another long state, so so let's see Nebraska. It says Buffalo Bill's a writer. Well, he helped him set it all up, helped him set up the Pony Express, and then he would just ride when there was nobody else to ride. He was kind of like a sub. The most famous sub. Yeah. Nebraska? For visiting. I'm sure if you live here, you have other thoughts, but for visiting? And if the Pony Express Museum weren't enough, here's another subtle reminder that we're in the West. The plan has changed slightly. We were always gonna go to Denver, but Google Maps showed us a route through Wyoming and we haven't been to Wyoming and why not go to Wyoming? So Wyoming adds about 48 minutes to our route and it's been a long day. Every day has been a long day. When else are we gonna go to Wyoming? So we're going to Wyoming. Also, I just wanna say we're still in Nebraska right now, but this is the West, like, isn't this just so Western? Have you seen a more Western thing than a dusty road with one car? This is the West. After all those extra minutes in the car, we made it. It's just kind of quiet, so we're gonna go. Onward and southward this time, through the most gorgeous sunsets and stopping at a very nice Mexican restaurant before we ended the day just north of Denver. Good morning. So we started the day just outside of Fort Collins and then drove straight down to Denver, where it is hot. Denver is the mile high city and we are now 17 floors higher. Look at those views. We're at a clock tower, by the way. Look at that. But seriously, look at those views and those mountains and those ominous, ominous clouds. Don't like those. Honestly, I was here almost exactly a year ago and everything's about the same. So I'm going to share some of that video because because I was going to make a vlog that time on that trip, but I didn't. And I have all this video from that trip with a better camera. So, so we're going to jump in time a little bit. And we're gonna speed it up a little bit because uh, tempo was slower back then. All right, so I'm on top of the clock tower right now. Um, you know, it's not really high compared to all the other skyscrapers, but for a time it was the highest building west of the Mississippi, so still pretty high. All right, here we are in front of Union Station. Did you know Lyft has scooters? Pretty cool. Union Station, interior, splendid. So I'm walking up to the Capitol building and look at that view. <gasps> what a city. We're on 14th Street and we're right by the Convention Center, which has a giant big blue bear. So it stands at 40 feet tall and it's peering into the Convention Center. Hey, so that was more than enough of that. And let's see the rest of Colorado. So first potential car issue, just leaving Denver and the brakes start making this stuttering sound along this very scenic part. And um, that was a bummer. So we got off at an exit, just chilling in a parking lot. The internet says it could be wheel alignment or tire stuff or even just uneven surfaces on the road or heat related issues so so hopefully it's just uneven road surfaces okay it's been a few minutes we waited not that long but the brakes seem fine and i'm so happy honest which is amazing because our next stop is a wonderful little fairy tale skiing town of vale colorado just look at this look how beautiful it is and my first impression was awesome because we went into a parking garage and there were restrooms which were clean, nice, and needed. Very badly needed. Vail is home to just under 5,000 people. It's known for its film festival, winter sports, and just being a <laughs> general rich people hang. Which meant we did not stop here for dinner. Instead, we continued on to Grand Junction, Colorado before ending the day and beginning the night in Utah. So it has finally come to the point where we relied a little too much on the GPS and... When it told us to take the exit instead of staying on the highway, we took the exit and learned that we would just be on this dirt-ish road forever parallel basically to the highway and it looks a 
little like, hey, you don't want your car to break down here. It also kind of basically just looks like we're on the moon and everything just looks so eerie. Like when we pass by these camper vans, which there's nothing wrong with those, they're just vehicles. It basically seemed like, huh, this could be our last few seconds on earth. And nothing happened during this night in Utah, but um, Utah is dark, really, really dark. Good morning. We came in late last night from Colorado. Last thing we saw was mountains and green, and then it was just dark everywhere. And now we wake up here in the desert and it's absolutely stunningly beautiful. And I'm just so happy to have wake woken up early. And it's not that early, it's just after seven, so. So now that I'm just kind of walking here in the desert, I'm like, what if we come across a desert creature? Like there are snakes and I've totally underestimated the fact that things can survive in these harsh climbs, so. So I'm probably gonna turn back, the hotel's right there. Seriously, I am just in awe. Like, look at all this. This is so amazing. I've never been to Utah and I feel like this could be the moon or Mars or a Hollywood set because it's just, it's just stunning and breathtaking. And, and I don't see a tree and usually that would make me uncomfortable, but I feel awesome. Look at this. Katie's Specialty Coffee in Ridgefield, Utah. Actually, the best oat milk latte I've ever had. And I've had a lot of them and a lot of expensive ones. And this one was probably like $5 or something, which is awesome compared to the ones I've had in Boston. And this is hands down the best, hands down, hands down. And hands up for another great smoothie during this trip. This one found at North Creek Espresso in Beaver, Utah. I'll be honest with you, at this point of the trip, I'm really dehydrated. I think I've been dehydrated since Colorado. My mouth is dry, my lips are dry, and the inside of my nostrils have been so dry, and it's just irritating at this point. I am irritated, but at least, at least there's this beautiful view, and we're gonna have a very fun next stop, so let's keep going. So somehow I didn't even mention that that was Mount Zion National Park. Stunning, gorgeous, and absolutely worth mentioning, but we mustn't dwell on the past. We're in Arizona, we just passed through the mountains, and this is just amazing to me. Mind blown, I was just talking about this for 30 seconds, and um, the mountains are behind us. Okay, they're all gone. So we were going through mountains and mountains and mountains, they're all gone, but now there are palm trees. It's like the two can't coexist, and that's interesting. Is there an ecological reason that this happened? I don't know, but, but why is it when the mountains ended, the palm trees began? And if anyone's wondering where the dividing line is on palm trees, it's, it's this little corner of Arizona by the base of the mountains. That's where it happened. So we're just getting into Las Vegas and we are sitting in traffic. And that's something I forget. I forget Las Vegas is an actual city. It's not just a network of casinos and hotels. But also, fun fact, the Las Vegas Strip isn't even in Las Vegas. It's just outside of the city limits and it's actually in these unincorporated areas of paradise and and the internet also said Winchester, but I've only heard Paradise, but also Winchester, apparently, so that's pretty cool. And I'm excited to get out of this traffic. And to celebrate our time in the fabulous Las Vegas, we, quite frankly, spent too much money on food. It was nice. It's just, you know, too much of the fancy thing that that's not really my thing. Honestly, I'm so tired. I'm so, so tired. But we're going to rally because we're here only one night. And I got my party drink, which is wild cherry pepsi and it's zero calories but it has caffeine which is all i need right now so happy about that and by rally i basically just meant spend too much money on museum tickets now this was a museum of illusion so everything you're seeing right now is basically projected on some wall which was really cool to see but really expensive to attend and then afterwards we just kind of rode the monorail which is cheap and a fun way to see the city and then we did some more traditional vegas things <clears throat> saw the sights and I don't mean that in a weird tongue-in-cheek way but there's just so much to see in Las Vegas especially as a pedestrian which I loved good morning and this is the last time I'm going to say this because it is the final day so we are in Las Vegas now and destination new home is literally today Los Angeles and wow I'm actually kind of sad but excited but you know you know how endings are but you also know how beginnings are wondrous and that's what it was like driving through the California border crossing at least this is what I assume it was I assume California it's its own country that's that's what I assume first I just want to say it's like 100 degrees outside and that's not an exaggeration so I'm going to keep this brief but we're driving from Los 
Las Vegas to Los Angeles and looking on the map, I wanted to find, you know, a good rest stop somewhere in between. It's just, you know, a four, four and a half hour drive. And almost exactly in the middle, there's a town called Yermo which is a nothing special sort of area in California, no offense. But then you screw, you zoom in on the map and you see a ghost town called Calico. Calico Ghost Town, which apparently is the largest silver mining camp in California since the late 1800s, which is awesome. Um, so we just got here, we paid the entrance fee, which was eight dollars per adult and already the vibe is westerny and i'm excited calico ghost town is like an outdoor museum where all the buildings are these places that you could have seen in the actual ghost town like the town hall candy stores and a few exhibits like the mines which we didn't see but also this train ride which was wholesome all right boss go ahead and pick any of the empty car that you want to sit at that isn't the engine Five dollars, an eight minute train ride, and the opportunity to learn about the real town of Calico. I have to stress this. This was a real silver mining town for 20 years. And the views, I just run out of adjectives at this point, but the views, just look at the views. Guys, we're less than an hour from Los Angeles and I have so many feelings right now. And a lot of them are good, but they're also mixed feelings because even though the destination was of course the goal here, the journey was also awesome, but I said it in a really cheesy way that I do not like, so cut that, save you. You're welcome. I had a lot of fun, but I'm also really tired. It's, I mean, it's not like, you know, we did super much, but... I've been staring at the sun for hours. You see this? You see this stark contrast? That's that's coming from the sun and it's hurting my eyes. But, um, yeah, no, I'm feeling a little sad. I don't want to say that because, you know, we're arriving safely, on time, nothing bad happened but I'm still a little sad and excited. Guys, that is Los Angeles. We are approaching Los Angeles, second biggest city in the United States, and we need to review the stats right now. Guys, we made it. We actually made it. We're in Los Angeles. Not just Los Angeles, we're in Santa Monica, which means the ocean is right there you see that ocean um i'm so happy and i have a lot of thoughts about this that i want to share when my thoughts are more <laughs> collected and i'm no longer crazy and and when i'm free oh look at that look at that nice glow of the sun so we got our first dinner which was super unremarkable to be honest and then went to a hotel because we don't get the keys to move in until tomorrow so so the adventure really is just beginning i have self-reflected and Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna keep this quick because it's getting late and um, we just traveled across the country. Anyway, favorite part was Nebraska, mostly because we also had low expectations for Nebraska. Wasn't really familiar with it. Didn't look up anything to do and everything we did was very interesting and fun and the weather was great. Utah, also beautiful because, you know, I wasn't familiar with it. So low expectations are the key to a happy life. My personal advice. I do have a mirror and I'm looking at myself right now. And yes, I look like this, but it's late and we just traveled across the country. So this is my dedication to the cause, okay? But seriously, how many of you have traveled across the US? Was it east to west or west to east? Or like some other direction? Because that trip was hard, but it was also one of the best times I've had in a really long time so so i'm really open to the idea of doing something else and i'm wondering who else has done trips like this and what would you do differently let me know thanks for joining also please consider liking this video that's so hard and i can't stress this enough it truly was a beautiful time and i'm so glad i got to share it with you thanks for joining <laughs>